Hi guys, it's Teacher Tana and welcome back to my online classroom. Today I want to continue on my series of moving from live to an online class. If you're here for information about VIP Kid, you are not in the wrong spot. Just go ahead and check out some of my previous videos and my YouTube account. You may also use my referral code here and email me at hiteacher.tana at gmail.com and I would love to send you some one-on-one -on -one resources. Today's video, like I said, is going to be specifically for my teachers that are used to teaching live and are moving into an online environment. So today I'm gonna to talk specifically about the resource called Google Meets. You may know it by its previous name, Google Hangouts, but they're actually being integrated. So depending on when you opened up your account with Gmail, you might see either one of them, either both of them or just one of them as they're integrating them together okay no matter what they use um, the platform looks very similar and as I walk you through one you should be able to use the other one just as easily so what is Google Meets? So Google Meets is created by Google. It's easily integrated into the Google suite of all kinds of applications that you may use and you can implement into your classroom. And it is a free video conferencing software. So by now, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you've maybe have created videos for your children. You've um, allowed them to, uh, you've posted them in Google Classroom and your kids are maybe talking back to you through programs like uh, Flipgrid. But what if you want to meet with them live? I do suggest that you find a way to do this, whether you're just meeting with them to check in or reviewing an assignment or even just finding time to play a fun game with your students. I think now more than ever, it's really important to continue our one-on-one -on -one relationships with these students and to really grow them as a community, as a class, even though it looks very different in this online environment. Okay, so let, let me go ahead and walk you through how you would set up and create a Google Meet with your students. All right, so step one is gonna to be to go ahead and sign into Google. You can see that I am signed in right here. And then I'm gonna click on this number pad. If you hover over it, it also says Google Apps. So you can click on that and we're gonna to go to Calendar. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my calendar. And let's say that I want to create a Google meeting for my students, I'm just gonna pick a random date, on June 3rd. So here's June 3rd, I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna say office hours for sample class. And I pick June 3rd, now I wanna add a time. Let's say I wanna meet with them at from noon to two, or actually probably to one is a really long time to be online okay so there it is and now I'm gonna go to more options so once I click more options and it's really important that you do so because here under add conferencing is where you're gonna make this a hangouts meet so there we go and then what you've just created here is actually the link that you're going to share in Google classroom in a few seconds so go ahead and control C that copy it down so it's ready to go. Another thing that I wanna show you while we're still on this page is the attach button. Let's say you're gonna go through a PowerPoint with the students while you are uh, streaming live for them. I wanna go ahead and get that attachment put in so that they can see it um, and then I can open it up during the presentation. So I'm gonna go and show them this draw a selfie project. So that's already in there. And so it'll pull up when I'm ready to do my meeting. Another handy option is here. If you do plan on making this a consistent meeting, you can actually do that here already. So you don't have to create over and over again, a different meeting. They can just click on the same one every time. You can click weekly, daily, monthly on the first, you know, that kind of thing. So that's a really convenient option. All right, so then you want to save that. Now I'm gonna go back to my little keypad here and this time I'm going to choose classroom. And now that I am in classroom, I'm gonna to go to sample classroom. I'm gonna create an assignment. I'm gonna call this office hours. And let me just peek back here. I said that I wanted to do it on June 3rd. So I'm gonna put that here. That way it's really accessible to the students. And I also said that it was gonna be at noon. Just checking back sure I've got everything correct. All right, so it says office hours, the date, and the time, and I think that's really convenient just to have that out there so students can quickly find it as needed. All right, instructions, click the link to join our live meeting, and then I'm gonna click add, and that's where I'm gonna put my link. Add right there, and you can see class video meeting. It is ready to go. Now there's a couple options here on your right that you can do. Um, sometimes you can assign it a uh, schedule, so you can schedule it for the day of. Now because students might be doing other things like watching siblings or helping around the home with their families or waiting for their turn on a device, 
I'm gonna go ahead and just assign it. And I'm probably gonna assign all of my office hours, just have them already in Google Classroom. That way students um, can have an idea or make a plan as to when they might need to be available to be online for question and answers with me. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press assign. And then you can see it right here. So this is what it's gonna look like for the student under classwork, office hours. And if they click it, they can just click the link and directly and be into the classroom with you. So what is it gonna look like when they get in it and what should you do to set it up and make sure it's ready to go when they do get into it? I do suggest that you get into the meeting at least 15 minutes before the students do. And this is why. As soon as the students have availability to the link, they can open it. So you don't want them to be waiting in that class um, without you and then having multiple students in there uh, interacting because you aren't able to supervise that. Just like you wouldn't want students alone in your classroom, you want to be uh, there to supervise all of their actions. Okay, so once it's open, you've got a few different options here. Hello, there I am. First of all, you can turn on and off your microphone. You can turn on and off your camera. You can also adjust the cameras or microphones that you're using. You can do that by clicking here under my options and clicking settings. So notice that I can change the microphone here. I want to put the blue snowball. I can change the speaker, whatever you want to do I'm doing that. And you can also change your video and you can also change the quality of your video. So if you're thinking I'm going to be holding things up to the screen and I really want kids to be able to read it, you might want to go for high def. Um, and then that's for sending, so that's the uh, video that I'm sending out. But I can also decide on the amount of definition that's coming back to me. So this is something to consider if you're gonna have a lot of people in the meeting. Um, maybe they're not presenting, they're just gonna be physically present. You might wanna keep it at 360. Um, or if you don't want them to present a video at all, maybe you wanna be the only one live. This could be something that you do at the beginning just to kind of figure things out and then you can give them access later to be live. It's kind of up to you, but you can also choose Use audio only if you want to. So just a couple things to think about there. I'm probably going to leave it at standard definition because I don't think I'm going to have my students presenting right away. So done. Okay, another option that you might have seen there is turn on captions. And I this is available here and also available when we get into the meeting. And I definitely suggest that you turn on captions. Think about your students who may be second language learners or have 504s and IEPs. Anything that we can do to make it a little bit easier uh, for them to access the material is, I think, standard, should be standard, right? We should be able to do it. And it's as easy as literally clicking that button. And that's it. All right, so notice that even though I'm on the screen ready to go to the meeting, I haven't actually joined yet. So all these things I could kind of mess with and fix before I enter the meeting. Okay, a couple other options that you'll see here is join and use phone for audio. Um, I might just want to, maybe my house is really loud and I'm gonna hold up my cell phone and I'm gonna speak through my cell phone. That's an option as well. And an option for your students as well. Um, but I'll get into that in the next screen. Okay, so you may have noticed that I'm kind of in a waiting room. I'm not really in the meeting yet. I've just been setting everything up. So once everything's set up, I wanna go ahead and press join now. If some students are already in there, you will see their names here, but you can obviously tell no one is in this meeting just yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and press join now. Okay, so now we are in, so you can see me live and in charge. Okay, so one of the things you can change right away is the layout. So you can spotlight, that means that you can choose a person to stay in the center. So you might wanna choose yourself in the beginning as you're maybe going through the agenda or explaining the rules for interacting. You could also do a sidebar. So a sidebar allows whoever is speaking to show up in the middle and then everyone else is kind of in a grid-like form on the side. And you can do tiled where you'll see everybody. I actually prefer tiled unless I'm giving a specific lesson and I want the focus on me and then I might switch to a side bar or a spotlight so you can decide kind of what's best for you another interesting um couple other things under the options here is you can record the meeting and I do suggest that you record it and I do so for two reasons one accountability for yourself if a parent or admin or anybody wants to know hey have you been meeting with students what have you guys been talking about you can quickly share a copy of this meeting with them now I wouldn't share this co this copy just automatically with parents um, I would probably only share it at, in an as-needed basis and I would probably um, link my admin into that email or conversation. Now, the second reason why I might wanna record is because not all my students will be able to attend, but just because they don't 
or can't attend doesn't mean that I don't want them to have access to the information. So what I probably do is record it and then go into Google Classroom and have them act and put the link to the recording back here. So they can always go back to the office hours on 6.3 and see what we talked about there. So those are just my two bits, I don't know, preference, but I think that might be helpful for you too. Okay, you can also turn on captions like we talked about before. And if you click, click settings here, you're just gonna see the settings for audio and video that we already dealt with earlier. Um, and then here's use phone for audio if you decide to switch for that, just like you saw on that first screen. Cut two more things here. You can see meeting details. Then you've got your, um, here you've got another link that you can share with the students if they're having trouble getting in, as well as a phone number. And then your availability to your attachments here, which were the ones that we attached earlier. I think we attached the draw selfie when you can open that up and show that to students. All right, and so now we have the present now button, and this is actually really helpful. You can present your entire screen, which is what I'm doing with you guys right now, or you can decide to just present a window. So I'm gonna show you how I would present a window. So let's say I wanna show them this assignment. Notice how I kind of made it its own, its own window. I'll make this a little bit smaller. So there it is. And then let me get my Google Meets back up. I'm gonna make that one a little bit smaller as well. Okay. So I want to share this window with my students right here. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna go into the browser URL, make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna scroll all the way to the end and I'm looking for the word edit. Okay, there it is. So I'm gonna erase everything, including the word edit and prep Put the word present right there and notice how it's presentation mode and this is actually a powerpoint that i got um, off a teacher website and it's amazing and it's something that i'm planning on doing with my esl or my second language learners um, online in this next week so it's there ready to go so then i'm going to say present now and then i'm going to say a window i've got my window ready to go i'm going to click on it and you can see now that I'm presenting on my screen. So I'm actually presenting this right now. It's kind of hard to tell because I'm working on multiple cameras here, but I'm actually presenting this live to them. And as I scroll through it, it's changing for my students to see. Now, when I'm done with that, I can just press stop presenting. And I'm back to my normal screen right there. Okay, so super handy and I definitely suggest that you use some of that and walk through some of your slides because some of you I'm sure have already created those slides. Why not use them? Why not walk a student through them? All right, the final thing that I want to show you guys is this right here. This on the top hand corner is a chat box. Just so you know, there's no way to disable the chat box. So I want to help you leverage it. So the good thing about it is anything that's typed in there is gonna go to everyone. So I would go ahead and write up a little like rules to follow in the chat room. This helps keeps the students accountable while they're in the online environment. So I'm gonna show you what I kind of wrote up really quickly. Obviously it's subject to change, but here I have my online expectations. So I'm gonna copy those and paste them on here. So when the students log in, this is the first thing they're gonna see inside the chat box. Um, so I included get rid of all distractions, cell phones, TV, etc. Raise your hand to be acknowledged to speak. That one's really important. Keep your mic muted until called upon. That's a typo, I'll have to fix that. Keep comments on topic and positive. Help minimize distractions by choosing a low, a quiet slash low traffic air location to join us. Be respectful and patient with each other. This is, a new, this is new for everyone. And then remember this meeting will be recorded. So I thought those are a good start. I might have to adjust those as needed, but I think it's gonna help students stay on task and understand that we are still in a professional environment. Sometimes they can forget that because a lot of videos and stuff seem to be more in their social world, not necessarily in their um, professional world. So this is this will be really great too if a student is off topic. I can say, hey, you know what, Johnny, please refer to the rules before you continue to engage in our conversation. So this kind of helps uh, take care of some classroom management within the online environment. Okay, and then a reminder, of course, that anything that is written in here is sent to everyone. Everyone can see it. Okay, so when you click people right now, you can only see me, but you will have all your students on here and you can add them in different ways. You can add them through email. So let's say a student hasn't shown up, maybe you wanna send them another email, or maybe a student hasn't shown up, 
You can use your learning management system to look up their number and call them and see if they want to or are able to join the meeting. The last thing I want to show you here is that you can hover over the person and if you click on them, it pins them. So Google Hangouts or Google Meets, whichever one you're um, using and, or calling it, um, whoever speaks on it becomes the center focus on the screen if you have it on Spotlight or, layout, or those two layouts that weren't all tiled. Okay. So when you click the pin, it actually pins it on that person. So no matter what noise is happening, the camera will automatically switch to the noise. It'll stay on the pinned person. This is great when you're doing presentations, when either you're presenting and you want all eyes on you or another student is presenting and you want all eyes on them despite any background noise. Hopefully all the student mics are on mute, but you never know. So um, pinning it is really nice. You can also unpin it by just clicking it again. And that's it. All right, and so we're back here. So that's pretty much the interface of Google Hangouts. There's one more tip that I wanna give you, and that is exiting Google Hangouts. So if you click this little phone here, you can see it says leave call. Um, you want to make sure you are the last person in the room, and this is why. When I leave the room, whoever is still in the room can still continue a conversation and continue hanging out in the meeting. And I don't necessarily want that to happen, just like you don't want to leave your classroom and hope that the kids just uh, behave like little angels, right? That's might happen, but may not. Um, so you want to make sure that you're supervising the entire time, meaning you wait until everyone is left before you end the meeting because you leaving does not end the meeting. Okay, all right, and so let me go ahead and click that and I'm done. You can rejoin if you want to. Maybe you did leave before a student and you're like, uh-oh, you can rejoin really quickly. You can also add some feedback um, that they're always looking forward to improve the product. All right, so you are done. Now I did tell you that there was gonna be a second way that you could create a Google Hangout, and this is really convenient is if, let's say, um, a student emails you and says, hey, uh, Ms. Worsham, I could really use some help with this project, I think I've got it, and you're like, you know what, this would be much easier in a video so you can show me and we can talk through everything. So how do you set up a kind of quick last minute meeting like that? Similar to before, you would go to Google, just like always. You would make sure you're logged in. Make sure my school account here. And this time, I'm gonna just go straight to Meet. Okay, so last time I did Calendar, this time I'm just gonna do Meet. And then I can press Join or Start a Meeting. And then I wanna maybe come up with a nickname for the meeting. So uh, let's say Student Question, or I could name it after the student forgot what I gave as my hypothetical name. Let's say I did Emily, right? And then, oop, I don't think it's gonna let me use parentheses. Student question, Emily. So then it's opening up and then I can share this information with Emily, right? So I can join in just like I normally would. And then I can send this information to Emily and she can join me in the meeting right away. So that's either a phone number or I can give her the actual link with the code. Okay, everyone, that's all I have for you today. If you found the information useful, don't forget to like and subscribe below. I do plan on making more videos for this mini series that I'm calling Live to Online. And of course, if you have any questions, don't forget to comment below so that I can get back to you as soon as I can. All right, everyone, see you on the internet.